Hey, welcome back, I'm TJ. Today we're talking ISDT Smart Discharger. Yeah, we haven't talked about dischargers yet. We've talked a lot about chargers. Well, and specifically ISDT Smart Chargers. Wow, my voice just said, mm, mm But with this discharger, I love it. Guys here at the shop love it. You know, Eddie and Dan both bought one. But what it is, is a 200 watt, 25 amp discharger. Does that mean you're gonna get 25 amp if you plug an 8S battery into it? Of course not, because our limits are 200 watt and 25 amps. We'll dive into that a little bit more later and kind of explain why that is and what you can expect out of this discharger. But what is it? It's 200 watt, 25 amp discharger. We just said that. And it goes from 2S to 8S. And it, it really is a good thing to have. So most chargers nowadays, when you get those and you do a storage charge or discharge, you know, you're gonna get 30, 40 watts. You know, some of them are obviously, they're gonna be different depending on what you buy. And it's one of those you get what you pay for. So, you know, cheaper chargers, probably not gonna get that much. So let's say, you know, if you get 30 watt charger and it maxes out at 1.5 amps, you're, you're not gonna discharge or storage charge in any kind of speedy fashion. Even, you know, even little 1500 6S packs take quite a while. So if you're one of those guys that have the 4,000, 5,000 or bigger, you know, multi-cell packs, it's going to take all day, especially if you have like four or five of them that you need to discharge with an actual charger. This thing is freaking awesome to be quite honest with you. You know, we, I love it here because I can just get my packs that still have voltage, plug them in and let it roll. So we won't ramble on too much about it. I have a lot of problems with that. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button so you can come back and watch me ramble on about random stuff. So let's dive right into this thing. And we've got a different camera today that we haven't had before. So should give you a better view than sitting here just staring at my pretty face. So when we open the box, first thing we got four little feet, little rubber things. They're actually nice and you do need those. Stickers, instruction manual, I did read through this. Um, the, the buttons on here, you only get two buttons, and depending on how you push those, oh, I'll shut up, we're gonna get into it. So, instruction manual, and pop this thing out here. So, when we do this, so you got two buttons. One of these buttons is your voltage, your cell checker, cell selector, whatever you want to call it. It goes two, three, four, five, and six, S. You know, but hey, you said it was an 8S charger, discharger. It is. So it only has lights 2 through 6S. Now to get it, let me plug this thing in. To get it to say 7 and 8 cell, once it's plugged in, tap any button one time. Now I'm going to apologize now, this thing is loud. Like especially once it starts discharging, it gets really loud. Um, so when we push this button, Start here, that's 2S, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7S, so it lights up 5 and 2, 5 plus 2 is 7. Do it again, 2 and 6 is lit up, so 8S. But we have a 6S battery plugged in right now, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to leave it on 6. And then for this, this is a Funfly 100C 6S 1300 milliamp hour battery from Tattoo. We can actually come over here and select our current. So as we click through, you know, so we got five and yeah, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 as we go through. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh, I was a little wrong, wasn't I? So 25 amps, we let it set here for just a second and it will start discharging. And it's just literally gonna draw all that current out of that battery and discharge it. There we go. So this is cool, very easy to do. You just push some buttons, light up some lights, and then it kind of takes over from there. And then it will discharge the battery down to roughly 3.8 volts per cell and then it'll stop. So you don't have to worry about it. You know, I don't want to use the words. You can hear how loud it's getting. I don't want to use the words set it and forget it because you never leave these unattended. So while you're discharging, while you're charging, never leave them unattended. So once this gets done, it will shut off and then you can unplug the battery and plug another one in to do it again or whatever you want. 
it puts out a little bit of heat because obviously getting rid of voltage out of a battery it has to go somewhere so it's trans is transferred into heat and then it blows it right out of the back let's see if you can hear it it's loud so I'll unplug that what I really like about this though is yes this is cool it's fully functional it works great it's the app so there's an app it's the ISD go app so let me pull out my phone all right so we're gonna do it just like we've never done it before the only difference is is my firmware is already updated and there's a key thing I, I did screen record this earlier so I was getting everything set up and when I plugged the battery in and got it hooked up to the app it, it pops up and says you know do you want to update your firmware yeah sure so I hit OK and then the next pop up is thinking that you have a charger hooked up. It says remove all your batteries and then keep your phone close to the device and hit OK. Now with this discharger, if you unplug the battery that is powering it, now it's not going to be on and you can't update firmware if it's not turned on. So I was like, okay, I'm going to follow directions just to see if I'm you know, missing something. And of course I wasn't, so I unplugged it and of course it lost connection to the phone. And my immediate thought was, crap, I just bricked this. So I plugged it back in, and just like I thought, the lights went crazy. It made all kinds of noise. And of course, it didn't have any firmware on it. Luckily, I was able to close the app. It connected right back up, and it said, you know, your firmware is damaged. Update now. So it did update, and it did correct that. We did send information to ISDT to let them know, hey, you probably should look at fixing that. Yes, it's not a, like a deadly error. It didn't you know, destroy this. But at the same time, it's one of those things where it really shouldn't do that. So just be mindful, plug the battery in, power it up. If you're updating firmware, do not follow the directions and unplug the battery. Keep the battery plugged in. Okay, with all of that out of the way, little disclaimer, we will plug our battery in. We have our app open. So plug our battery in down here. It will power, or actually won't do anything until you tap a button one time. So it powers up. Come up here to the top right of your app, push the plus button, and the little refresh button on the scan Bluetooth devices. And it's not gonna do anything because I forgot to put this into bind mode. Bind mode? Yeah, bind mode. So if we, let's just start over. So plug your battery in. Once your battery's plugged in, tap one of the buttons. It'll power up, hold both buttons, it will beep, now it's in pairing mode. Now we can go back to the app, push the little refresh button, and it'll pop up FD200. Tap that, add the device, okay. It'll connect. And this really is what I love about it, is to be able to come in here, click on our FD200. We can set up presets to say, you know, I want something specific for these batteries. So I'm gonna stop this. We can hit the back arrow. Nope, don't hit the back arrow. Hit the top right settings. So once you're in here, and I, I do want to mention that I've already updated the firmware. This is the first time for you plugging this in. It is going to ask you to update the firmware back up a little bit. Listen to that disclaimer while you do that. You can hit OK, leave the battery plugged in. It takes just a minute. It'll update. Then you can come onto this part. So you have preset task here at the bottom, and you can hit the plus button. And then, so for this battery, it's a 100C battery. You know, amps doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna put 25 amps on it. Voltage cutoff, we'll say 3. Point, well, let's just leave it the default, 3.8 volts per cell. And then we're gonna say we have a 6S battery. Now it says balance cells. I wanna say that's probably just a translation error because obviously if our balance connector is not plugged in, it's not balancing anything. So it's just going to discharge the battery. Afterwards, you can check with, you know, like the ISDT battery checker if you want. Make sure it's still balanced fairly close. Um, honestly, for me, I just kind of discharge it. And then when I charge it up, we always balance the cells anyway, right? So with that, we're going to say 6S 1300 milliamp hour. Hit our little return button and the green check marks. Now up here at the top, we have 6S 1300. So anyway, we got the preset 
task set for 6S 1300 so we can come back. Now one cool thing is you can calibrate this so you can check your battery and make sure the battery is exactly what it should be. You plug it in, you come into manual calibration. Uh, please make sure the battery is connected properly. If the device works abnormally after manual calibration, click the refresh button, restore parameters, okay. So your refresh button is down here on the bottom right. But our battery voltage, we can check it with a good multimeter that we know is for a fact correct. And then we can adjust this so the char or the discharger knows exactly what the voltage should be. And I mean, that's always a good thing for me it seems like they're always pretty good, so I haven't really had to adjust anything. Uh, charger, you can change your charger's name, system information, all the fun stuff. So we come back, and then we can hit play, and we can change stuff. But if we hit preset task here on the bottom, you can actually click 6S1300, and that's going to put in automatically what we had for a preset. Duh, it's preset, right? So with that... If you're like me and you talk a lot, it will stop. So when we come into a preset task, we click the preset that we just did and it will automatically start. Now what it's doing is it's gonna start discharging just like before. But we're gonna stop that and walk through here real quick. So if we hit the play button, we don't have to have a preset set. So you can hit the play button. We can come in here, we can change our discharge current. So we're gonna leave it at 25 amps, cut off voltage, same thing. we we'll drop it down just because. And then we can select our cells on here, hit the little arrow, and it's going to automatically start. And this will kick up and it'll start discharging. So we'll let it do it for just a second. You can hear it winding up. So we're going to see what it'll top out at. So right now you can see on the app, it says 155 watts, 6.5 amps. Right now it's showing 3.96 volts per cell, 23.65 volts for the entire battery. Shows your temperatures. So we're at 202 watts, 8.6 amps. You know, but this is, we set it at 25 amps, right? So why is it not discharging at 25 amps? If you know, leave a comment in the comments and let me know why it's doing that. You know, interaction, it's a good thing. But no, for real, let's, let's, let's figure it out. So, we will turn that off. There's no reason to have it running and screaming in our ears while we're doing this. All right, so we'll get our calculator out for this part. And the, what we're going to do is just kind of walk through why, if this is a 25 amp discharger, why is it not discharging? 25 amps when we tell it to discharge 25 amps and so that's going to be the limiting factors is 200 watts or 25 amps whichever one you reach first so 200 watts what 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 is what what is watts and that's your voltage times your amps that will give you watts so let's just say you know a fully charged 6s battery so a fully charged lipo is 4.2 volts for one cell. So 4.2 times 6 is 25.2 volts is as high as this battery should ever be. So if it's a fully charged battery and we plug it into this discharger, how many amps are we going to be able to draw from this battery? So 25.2 and the way we do that is we work backwards. We know what our amps are or we know what our voltage is and we know what our watts is. Yes. Wow. My, my brain's like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. All right, so we know what our voltage is, 25.2. And we know what our watts is, and that's 200. So our 200 watt limit. And then we wanna divide that. So it's either volts times amps equals watts, or watts divided by, by volts gives us our amps, or watts divided by amps gives us our volts. So we have our watts of 200. We will divide by our maximum voltage, which is 25.2 equals 7.9 amps. So if we set this to 25 amps, it's going to stop at 7.9 amps. Now as the voltage lowers on our battery, it will raise. So you know 25.2 volts is the max this will be. So let's say if it drops to 25 volts as it discharges, 
what is our amps gonna be then? So we'll say 200 watts divided by 25 volts is eight. So as soon as it drops to 25 volts, it will actually raise up a little bit to eight amps. Now, you know, the nominal voltage, let's say, you know, 3.8 is what we had to set on, 3.8 volts per cell to stop at. So let's say we were at 3.82, so right before it stopped. And we have six cells on our battery. So 22.92 volts right before it stops. So we're gonna say 200 watts divided by 22. I think it was 92, what we just said, equals 8.7 amps. So when we start discharging a fully charged 6S battery and we tell it we want 25 amps, it's not gonna get there. It's gonna start at like, what, I think we said 7.9 amps. As the voltage lowers, it will actually raise the amps and it can stop at 8.7 amps. So a little bit of a math, math lesson, we can dive into the different voltages. So, you know, let's just say we have a fully charged 8S battery, 4.2 times 8, 33.6 volts, 200 watts divided by three, well, what did I say? 4.2 times 8, 33.6. So 200 watts divided by 33.6 gives us 5.95 amps. So, you know, an 8S battery, the most you're gonna, or yeah, 8S battery, if it's fully charged, you're gonna get 5.95 amps. And then obviously as the battery discharges some, it will raise those amps up. But again, yes, it is 25 amps. However, 200 watts is our limiting factor. And then we have to worry about, you know, from there of, you know, if you're not getting 25 amps, that's why. Do a little bit, bit of math and you can see what you can actually get. But that's really all there is to it. It's a discharger, it discharges batteries really well, does a great job, works with Bluetooth. There's, they're, they're on the store now. You know, I'm not gonna say prices because Lord knows, you know, in a week the price could change. So links in the description if you're interested. If you're not subscribed, definitely click the button, subscribe, push the bell to get notifications. Like this video, comment if you can. It really does a lot to help us out and appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.